So, in the previous lecture we saw that because we were looking at a problem where we had a Markov decision process on two states and what we saw was that because of the nature of the problem the, the kind of actions that were available at each state uh, and the transitions that were that were allowed what we what we saw was that in this problem the set of Markov policies is actually the same as the set of history dependent policies. What we will do now in this lecture is what we will do now in this lecture is we will consider a variation on this problem where we will add an, an additional action and in which in uh, to, uh, to the state S1. So, the model now would be that you again have state S1 in state S2 again transition the earlier details remain the same you can when you take action A11 you get a reward of 5 and you transition to state S2 with probability 0 0.5 you you also can remain in state S1 with probability 0 0.5. And when you are in state S1, you also have this action A12 that one you can take A12 is this action. This action gives you a reward 10 with probability 1. When you are in state S2, you have you can take action A21, which is the only available action, and it gives you reward minus 1 with probability 1. The addition that I am going to make is this particular thing here. I will now add another transition, another action here. Let us denote this action by A13. A13 is the action that we can take in state S1. So, now we can actually take three different actions in, in S1, A11, A12 and A13. Now, A13 gives us a reward of 0 and with probability 1 it leads us to state S1. Now, as a result of this, notice that when you are in state S1, we cannot really conclude what the history of has of actions and states uh, what the history of actions has been. We can conclude that if you are presently in state S1, you were earlier in state S1. That is because there is no way to reach to S1 from S2. When you are in S2, you, you stay in S2 by taking action A21, which is the only action available. So, when you are in S1, you were previously in S1 that is clear, but when you are in S1, it is not clear whether you are in S1 because you took action A11 and, and went through this arc to remain in S1 or because you took action A13 and went through the green arc that then kept you in S1. So, in other words, just merely being in S1 does not help us conclude what the history has been so uh, history of states and actions has been so far. It only tells you the se sequence of states, but not the sequence of actions. In, a, in other words, the entire history is not known. So, as a result, the history contains in it much more information than just the knowledge of the state, uh, than the, just the knowledge of the state of this uh, that you are in. Okay. As a result of this, the set of history dependent policies in this problem will not be the set same as the set of Markov policies. So, now let us for this problem let us write out a history dependent deterministic policy, a deterministic history dependent policy and let us call this policy pi h d small pi h d small pi standing for the policy. Now, I need to again define for you what I am going to be doing at each decision epoch. So, I will add decision epoch at decision epoch 0. At decision epoch 0 here is one particular policy 
for example, since now there are three actions available it can at, at each at, at state s 1 you can choose any one of them. So, here I am going to just simply choose in this decision rule I am going to choose action a 1 1 in state s 1. and action a 2 1 which is the only action I can choose in state s 2. Then at decision epoch 2 or sorry at decision epoch 0 uh, at decision epoch 1 I have to look at this in a little more in, in a little more with a little more care. Now, at decision epoch 1 what is the length of history that has evolved so far at this up, up until that time. At decision epoch 1 we have in we have the following information. We have the information of the state at time 0, you have the, inf the state at 0 the action that you took at 0 and the state at time 1. This is the state that you are in it at decision epoch 1. So, these 3 things together tell you the history at, at decision epoch 1. This here is the history at decision epoch 1. Notice that we did not have to make all this fuss for decision epoch 0 because at decision epoch 0 the history was actually just simply the state at, at, at time 0 and so therefore, the hist uh, history uh, the hist history was completely encompassed by the state. So, I just wrote out my policy as a function uh, my decision rule only as a function of, of the state. Apologies there is a small mistake here this should be d 0. Yeah. Okay. Now, because the there is a the, the uh, you have a uh, you have the history of uh, at decision epoch 1 comprises of these 3 variables what we will do is we will uh, we will write write out policies in a in a certain form. So, what we will do is we will write out where we were at decision epoch 0. Okay, so, that means we will write out these two these two components here together which is where we were at decision epoch 0 these that is these two and what what actions we took at decision epoch 0. So, everything that has happened up to up and at decision epoch 0 will be written together and the state at at, time, at decision epoch 1 will be written separately. So, so, you have a so this is state comma action. The state comma action at decision epoch zero that is been written that is written here in this column. So, these can take po the following possible values you can take you can be in state s 1 and have taken action a 1 1. You could have been in state s 1 and taken action a 1 2 could have been in state s 1 and taken action a 1 3 and you could have been in state s 2 and take an action a 2 1. All of these are possible state action combinations that could have occurred at decision epoch 0. Now, let us write out the state that is possible at, uh, at decision epoch 1. So, state at a 
for one. This state there are two possibilities you could have you could be in state S1 or in state S2. And then in the each of these cases you need to I need to now tell you what the action would be. In other words when I look at this table I and I consider this row here and this column the entry corresponding to these two will tell me the action that I should be taking when I when at decision epoch 0 I am I was in state S1 and I took action A11 at time at decision epoch 0 and at decision epoch 1 I end up in state S1 ok. So, this is what I am going to now fill in. So, for for example, one particular deterministic uh, uh, dis, uh, deterministic history dependent decision rule could be that in this case when I when you have when you are in state when you were previously in state S1 and took action A1 A11 and are currently also in state S1 you are going to take action A13 say ok. Then and in this and in this term here could be has to be because I am in state now in state S2 I have to take action A1 8 to 1 ok. Now, I can now fill in this entire table. Okay. So, the when, when uh, so once again the this entry here is simply saying that when the history is like this the history is that you took you were at decision epoch 0 you were in state S1 then you took action A11 then then you reach state S1 in that with that history when that is the history you should be taking action A13 ok. That is what the this particular table is telling you and likewise when the when at decision epoch 0 you are in state S1 took action A11 and are presently at decision epoch 1 in state S2 then you are taking action A21 that is that is the specification. Now, if I fill up this entire table I will get a fully um, uh, it will fully describe for me the a deterministic uh, a, a deterministic history dependent decision rule. But notice a few things that uh, that are little subtle about this I can I cannot indiscriminately fill in whatever I want here. See for example, if you are previously in state S1 if you are previously in state S1 and then you took action A12. Now, action A12 keeps uh, always transitions you with probability 1 to state S2. So, there is no way that you can actually be in state S1 at at decision epoch 1. So, if you, if at decision epoch 1 you are in state S1 and then you transition to state uh, A uh, the, and you took action A12 then with probability 1 you transition to state S2 that is depicted here. So, consequently this this term here is actually infeasible. This combination is infeasible, which means this history cannot occur in this problem. It cannot happen that at decision epoch 1 you took action, you were in state S1, took action A12, and at decision epoch, uh, sorry, at decision epoch 0, you were in state S1, took action A12, and at decision epoch 1, you ended up in state S1. That is just not possible. So, this term, this is infeasible. So, you uh, but but it is you will end up in state S2 and when you are in S2 you you have to take action A21. Now, if you are in state S1 and take and you take action A13 this is the new action we introduced here remember. Now, if you are if you take action A13 you transition back to state S1. So, 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 so then you can then then uh, being in S1 at decision epoch 1 is feasible. So, that is not that is not a problem. So, here suppose uh, you know suppose I am going to take action A11 let me fill this in here. But in this case the other possibility which is being in state S2 is not possible that that is because that is because you transition back to S1 with probability 1 when you take action A13. So, A13 takes you back to S1 with probability 1 that is the one written here. So, you could not potentially have been in state S2. So, being in at, at decision epoch 1. So, this history is impossible 
or infeasible. So, S1 at time 0 and action A13 at time 0 followed by S2 at time 1, this combination is infeasible. Similarly, now S when you are in S2 at time 0 and you take action A21 at time 0, you cannot move back to state S1. So, again now S1, this history is infeasible. And when you are in, so you have to be in state S2, in which case all you have to do is take action A21. These are the only, uh, the, this, this is a, a history dependent, uh, a, a history dependent deterministic policy. So, a, any policy regardless of what, uh, 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 what it is will always have to respect that a, uh, once it is history dependent will have to respect what kind of histories are actually feasible. So, these, feasi the, these infeasibilities will occur in any, any history dependent deterministic policy that you define. However, that is this is not the only history dependent deterministic policy while in any determ history dependent deterministic policies all these infeasibilities will remain there is significant uh, variation possible in terms of the actions that you can choose here. For example, here I could have chosen A12, here I could have chosen A13 uh, or, or, A, or here I could have chosen A11 and A12 here etc. All of these are valid history dependent deterministic policies. Let us now look at a history dependent randomized policy. randomized history dependent policy. Let us denote this by pi h r. Okay. Now, for, for this to be a randomized history dependent policy, Again, I need to tell you what probability distribution I am choosing over the set of actions at each decision epoch. So, in this case, let us write for example, a decision epoch 1, uh, sorry decision epoch 0. So, this is at decision epoch. Once again, as before, at decision epoch 0, all I know is the, uh, the entire history is encapsulated in the state at time 0. Okay, so, all I have is uh, that is the entire all the history information that I have. So, what I have is therefore, a policy that will map the state uh, at time 0 to a probability distribution on the set of actions uh, on the state of actions that are available in the in that state. So, here for example, is one such policy. So, I will write directly the probability distribution. So, I will write directly the probability uh, probability distribution. So, here my decision rule is D0 HR. When I am in state S1, I take action A11 with say probability 0 0.6 and I when I and I am in state S1, I take action A12 say with probability 0.3. Now, notice that this time we have 3 actions. So, just simply telling me the pro, uh, telling you the probability of taking action A11 does not directly tell us the probability of the other, other 2 actions okay, because there are 3 of them. So, I need to also tell you what probability of taking action A12 is that is point in this case we have taken it to be 0.3. So, then that tells me that the last remaining one is
has to be 0.1 and naturally because you are when in state S2 there is not much choice D0 HR of S2 when you are in state S2 the probability of taking you have only one action which is A21 and the probability of choosing that action is, is 1. This is at decision epoch 0. This is the probability of choosing with these actions at uh, uh, of, of choosing these various actions when you are in state S1. That means when the history up until time 0 which is the state at time 0 is S1 and the state at time 0 is S2. Now let us write out a the what happens at decision epoch 1. So at at decision epoch 1. Now once again as we did in the in the deterministic uh, history dependent policy I need to make a detailed table a table which will comprise of what is transpired at decision epoch 1 and what is the state at decision epoch uh, sorry at what is the what has transpired at decision epoch 0 and what is the state at decision epoch 1 okay. So to make I will write out this table so this is decision epoch Zero. Again, let me write this as state comma action, and let's denote these by S comma A. Once again, we have the same four possibilities that we had earlier because it doesn't matter whether you are choosing deterministic policies or not. The set of possible histories remains the same not the actual realized history but the set of possible histories remains the same ok. So, let us write these out. So, S1 A11, S1 A12, S1 A13 and S2 A21. So, when you what these are telling you is that when you are in state S1 you could uh, at time uh, at decision epoch 0 then you could have taken action A11 or action A12 or action A13 and when you are in state S2 at time 0 you would could you could have taken action A21 these are the only possibilities. Now on uh, out here once again I can I need to write what the uh, what the uh, what for what are the states I could that could have been realized at decision epoch 1. So, here I would decision epoch 1. So, I have let me write this. So, as the state at decision epoch 1. Now, this here the again there are two possibilities that the state was S1 and the state was S2, state at this in epoch 1 is S1 and S2. But now here I cannot simply tell you which action I am taking and you know I cannot just simply write one particular choice of action here because various actions can be uh, because this is now a randomized. Uh, history dependent policy I need to tell you with what probability each action is being chosen. So, what I need to list out here is the set of all possible actions and their associated probabilities. So, here what I will write here is is action the names of the actions. So, this actions which is in this case A11 a12, A13, these these are the actions, and in in state S2, again A21 is the only available action. And what I would write write out here in this case is the probability is the are the probabilities. So what I would write is this distribution Q D1 
H R of S A. So, S and A is chosen from here from uh, S and A are chosen from this from this portion that means this is what has happened at decision epoch 0 you are in state S and took action A S and A and then when you are in at decision epoch 1 you are in state S1 that then you have S1 and you took action A. action A which is one of these these three actions with a certain probability which is denoted by Q D 1 H R uh, which is denote uh, which is de, uh, denoted by Q D 1 H R. So, when you are in state S 1 and uh, you were previously in state S comma A where S comma A is as given in the in the rows of this table here in, and you took took an action let us call let me denote this action by action action A 1 here ok and you took action A 1 at decision epoch 1 and A 1 can take one of these values A 1 can be A 1 1, A 1 2 or A 1 3. The for these three possibilities I need to write out write out probabilities. So, one possibility for example is that you take action A 1 1 with probability 0 0.4, action A 1 2 with probability 0 0.3 and action A 1 3 with probability 0 0.3. So, what this once again what this means is that if at decision epoch 0 you were in state S 1 and took action A 1 1 and at decision epoch 1 you were in state S 1 then you would be taking action A 1 1 with probability 0 0.4, A 1 2 with probability 0 0.3 and A 1 3 with probability 0 0.3 at, uh, at decision epoch 1 ok. Now, now let us look at the other uh, let us fill out the other uh, other terms here. Now, if you are in state if if instead you are in state S 2 then you have only one action to choose from. So, the action has to be has to be A, A 2 1 with probability 1 ok. So, that is uh, that is this particular probability. Now, if you were if you are if you at decision epoch 0 you were in state S 1 and you took action A 1 uh, action A 1 2 at decision epoch 0. Then if you were in decision epoch uh, if you were in state S 1 and you took action 0 at decision epoch uh, at decision epoch 0 then you have then the, the then the figure actually tell then the the model actually tells us that if you took action a 1 2 you would be transitioning with probability 1 to state s 2. So, there is no way that you could have taken act you would be in state s 1. So, none of these actions can actually be taken none of the actions available at s 1 can actually be taken. So, you cannot take action a 1 1 a 1 2 or a 1 3. In other words the very history of s 1 a 1 a 1 2 followed by S 1 again is is infeasible. So, this all of these are infeasible. And in since you are going to be ending up in pro, uh, in S 2 well that there is only one action to choose that is A 2 1. Now, if you if you took action A 1 3 then yes you sh you can be in then you can be in uh, in state in state S 1. Uh, in fact, you will be in state S 1 with probability 1 and there you can take action these these three actions A 1 1, A 1 2 and A 1 3 with various probabilities. In this case I am going to write them as 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Now, if your history is uh, S 1 and then you took uh, at, at time 0 and you took action A 1 3 
at time 0, then there is no way you could have ended up, uh, there is no way you could have ended up in state in state a in state s2 at decision epoch 1. Uh, that is because if you are in state s1 and you took action a13, then it has to be that you will transition you will remain in state s1 at at decision epoch 1 as well. So, this will transition you back to to state s1. So, as a consequence of this, this particular history now is infeasible. And then finally, if you are in state S2 and you take action A12, then you could not, you cannot again move to state S1. So, all of these actions are again infeasible. So, such a history is actually not possible and one has to take an action, uh, one has to take an action A, A to 1 itself in in state uh, in state as in state S2 which is the state that you end up with. Now, when this is this here is a description of a uh, randomized history dependent policy. So, this is now a description of a history dependent randomized policy. So, as we have as you have seen through this through these two uh, through these lectures, a, we have these various different uh, classes of policies and uh, they, they are all to be described in terms of the, the information that is available uh, to those various policies. What we will now ask in the next in the next lecture is whether all this information additional information and the richness that history dependent policies bring to the problem, whether that actually helps in in fact getting us a better cost. So, we come back therefore to we will come back therefore to the question that we asked a few uh, two lectures ago which is whether there is at all any benefit to having history dependent policies and randomized policies. In other words do there exist deterministic policy deterministic Markov policies which use only the information of the current state that are optimal. This will come up in the following lecture.